Hello and uh, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about NUX3 Prisma and updating a user record. In the last video, we showed how you can delete a user. We had a little bit of error checking as well. Uh, so as an example, this is how, um, let's first add some users here. We're going to add a user. So we say, we're going to need name. I uh, just gonna say mama papa as a name. Oh, that's a post request. All right, I'm gonna add another person. One more. All right, and then we say let's get all the users here. And here they are. So let's say we wanted to delete uh, number four, Dorothy Day. Delete. Say we require an ID. It's ID number four. You send. And then uh, when you try to get. All right, number four is not there. So what if we wanted to edit? Using now, of course, it's a very, very simple example, but it's just about how to use Nox 3, uh, how to use Prisma with Nox 3. So, let's say we wanted to add a um, I mean to update a user here. So, let's look at what Prisma says. So, we go to Prisma, we're looking for update. So, it says if you want to update a user or just you. A, a record user dot update where something something and then the data. So for us, it's going to be where this has to be or maybe unique if it's a single record. Otherwise, you want to say update many if you're gonna update many records. We want to just update one record here. So I'm just gonna copy that and go back to our code here. I'm going to use the users dot put uh, ooh. all right let's update users where ID and what we're going to do here is we're going to expect um, Actually, we're going to expect an ID and data of the user. Okay, so we're going to first say const body equals read body. It's gonna we're gonna get the body object from our request, and then we are going to say. Um, ID because maybe this is too. We actually need an await here. And we need async here. And then we're just going to say const name because body dot name. And here we're just going to say where ID is because ID, the data is, is going to be the name. And uh, we're missing, it, it doesn't know what Prisma is. I'm just going to go to one of here. And Prisma is this right here. All right. So we don't want to return this. <laughs> uh, Let's return this user. So what this is saying, right, is we expect from the request body to have uh, an ID and a name. And really what I should do here is um, I'm going to say, I'm going to just say let user equals now. And really if you're using 
TypeScript, you don't even need to do this. If you just say let user, it will be fine. And then we're gonna say here, user equals that. Then we're just going to say if we have ID and we have a name. That way we don't crash. Okay. And then, so if we have an ID and a name, then we're gonna update the database. Otherwise we, we won't worry about it and we just return the user or perhaps what's better would be to return an error. Let's do that actually. We had an we created an error in the delete. We're just gonna copy. I'm gonna copy all this and go to our update here. And just before we uh, actually we'll just we'll, we'll check this right here before we even go further down into the code. We're just gonna say if um, if we don't have an ID or, or we don't have a name, no, actually we need both. Um, so I believe it's going to be what? ID and name logic. <laughs> oh man. So if ID and name, if that is false, then we're going to return an error. We're going to just say, um, oh, what's the error code for bad? Is it 401? I think that. Well, let's re see. Uh, HTTP status code for missing data. Bad request 400. It's going to say missing ID or name. All right. So if we don't have an ID and a name, we need both. I guess we're just saying missing ID and name here. We're going to return an error. Otherwise, um i guess we don't need this but i'm gonna leave it here just because it makes the code safe maybe it's redundant but it may, it makes the code really safe we only deal with, with with the database if we absolutely have all the information we need okay this is very you know it's uh simple so let's see what we get let's restart the server oh i gotta save this no, save. Now I gotta restart the server again. Alrighty. Let's see what this does. So we're gonna put, so let's just say we're missing ID and name. What's going to happen? Oh. So we get a status code 400 missing ID and name. What if we have an ID in the body, but there's no name, what's gonna happen? Same thing, missing ID and name, okay, great. So let's do a get request, see uh, whose number, oh, there is actually no number four. We're gonna do the very last one, ID number eight. We're gonna change the name from one more to, I don't know, two more or something more sensible. So ID name, I mean ID, and then the name is going to be, we're just going to change that to um, Shabbat. Put. Shabbat Shalom, <laughs> have a peaceful Sabbath. Okay, let's see what happens. It's gonna be a put request. Okay, so it says uh, it worked well because we're supposed to return the user if we have all the data that we need. What happens if we do a get request? 
See, the name has been changed to Shabbat Shalom. And then what if we can do another one? Let's say ID number one. We're going to change the name from uh, Jeremy Mongeloa to... Jeremy Shalom Peace. So, oh, so it's supposed to be a put request. All right, let's do a get request. There we go. And that's how we do it. Now, we have been able to do all the CRUD, the create, read, update, and delete. However, our front end isn't connected to our back end, meaning we can't use our front end app. Let's look at the front end app. We're on 3001 as for the port. So we go to our browser, we go to localhost 3001. And I believe all we have is a home page. And the reason why we didn't put any code in the front end to access the database, because I really don't think it's safe to do it that way. I think you want to access your database from your back end server, right? So that's why we put the code in the server. And for us to connect to the server, we have to use an API. So in the next video, we are going to create some front end code to see how we can send requests do a data fetch or send data to the back end so we can uh, ask communicate with the database that way hope you like this video hey if you want a nux3 starter kit that looks like this with the nux3 with nux3 with the tailwind pages a plugin composables and components uh just click the link below this video and um, you can download it, it's yours absolutely free. It's going to help you learn how to uh, write decent Nux3 uh, code. All right, hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Shabbat Shalom. Actually, it's, it's not the Sabbath day today, but Shalom. All right.